and this is Callers Chat, a group that I run to talk about all things calling. Um, tonight I am delighted to be joined by Caroline Brockbank, um, who's based up in Edinburgh, and she runs a project called Kaylee Kids. Um, she's loved Scottish dancing since she was five, um, she danced all through university, called with various Kaylee bands, and when her children were small she thought it would be fun to set up a group for them and their friends, and that's how Kaylee Kids was born. So, over to Caroline, thank you. So, yeah, Kaylee Kids, thank you for the introduction, Lisa. That's uh, saved me saying quite a lot of stuff. So, uh, yes, I am uh, I live in Edinburgh. I'm besotted with Scottish country dancing, probably more than is healthy. And, uh, yeah, I danced as a child. And um, then initially I trained as a speech and language therapist. So um, I worked for five years as a speech therapist while also um, doing Kaylee Calling in my spare time and dancing um, with the Edinburgh University New Scotland Country Dance Society and various other groups. And uh, when my children were small, I took them to baby music and to baby gym and that kind of thing. And I thought, mm, you could do this with Kaylee dancing, probably. So I just booked a hall for six weeks. And I took my children along and got my children's friends and their parents. And it was just going to be a six week project, but it seemed to go OK. And then people started coming who I didn't know, but had heard about it. And word sort of spread. And then we had a morning session as well as an afternoon session for a different group of people. And before I knew it, it was it was it had turned into a business. And also, um, yeah, one of the things was when my children were playgroup the playgroup advertised they were going to have a, a Kaylee for the children and their families and I thought well this will be interesting I'll get to see what a, a toddler's Kaylee is like wow what will they do well it was rubbish I went along and there's nothing as motivating as thinking this is rubbish I can do better than this it was in the evening it went on too long they were playing bagpipes in the hall it was loud it was chaotic and I thought, this is absolutely terrible. I can do better than this. So I think I probably put a lot of people's backs up. But the following year, I said, I'm going to run you, Kaylee, and I'm going to do it better. And I did. Um, so my idea, I think, when I started Kaylee Kids, was that it was going to be a regular class, like Baby Jim, Baby Music, and that people would come along regularly. But it turns out that that's a very... English viewpoint and uh, or not a Scottish one what the Scots seem to want unless they're mad Scottish dancers is they want a Kaylee to celebrate a birthday or Christmas or Halloween or St Andrew's Day they don't want to commit to coming every week and practicing every week so I've had a lot more success doing one-off events rather than making it a regular weekly thing and in fact since Covid what I've done is just uh, weekend events that whole families can come to. And that's worked a lot better than preschool afternoon or morning classes. Plus, I get a lot of bookings for birthday parties, weddings, possibly where the couple have been together for a while and they've got children. And um, I've done, done two bar mitzvahs. I've done some first communions. I've done all sorts of really interesting things. I haven't done a funeral yet, but you never know. So um, what I say at the start of my sessions is, if you're old enough to go to school, you can dance with your friend. If you're not old enough to go to school, you need your mum or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or a bigger boy or girl to dance with you. And one grown-up can dance with two children and one child can dance with two grown-ups. And that pretty much covers everybody. And Ideally, you don't get two very small children hanging on to each other, not having a clue. But what I do is I look at the children, but I give the instructions to the adults. So I'm expecting the adults to sort of interpret what I'm saying and lead their children. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they stand around drinking coffee. Um, sometimes they stand around drinking coffee on the dance floor, which I'm not terribly happy about. But usually that works. I look at the children, I say, you will do blah, 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 blah. But what I'm actually saying is to the adults, you will help your child to do whatever. And so it's very important that uh, they can dance in groups of three, because quite often a parent will come with two children, or a child will come with two parents, 
Also, it's good if it can be done with one hand because sometimes they've got a baby on the hip, although I do encourage front carriers. And uh, I've adapted the dances so that um, I try and aim for always doing things you would do in a Cayley or a Scottish dance. I try not to deviate too far and have people actually doing things that you'd never do in a Cayley because it's difficult. You have to, whilst adapting the dances, you still have to have them recognisable as dances. You can't have people doing something that's so far removed that actually, apart from doing it to Scottish music, they're not actually Cayley dancing at all. So, for example, the Gay Gordons, turning, going backwards, all of that, I just have them holding one hand and they go along for seven steps and they turn around and they go along for the other, which you can do having a child in each hand. Then you turn your child under or both children under like an egg whisk if you've got a child in each hand and then you can skip round in a circle and then you start again. And I've come up with um, a few dances as well. I've adapted the Flying Scotsman so that you stand next to your partner. You never stand opposite your partner in a set because that's too scary. So I have uh, rows of families facing rows of families and then a family dances like as one person rather than having their partner opposite them. Um, so then as well, so you could do pretty much Britain, Britannia two step I've put in jumping rather than the pad basque. And I try to have, if you're asking a child to go somewhere, there has to be a reason for them going there. You can't immediately ask them to go from point A to point B and then straight away to point C because they'll just go from point A to point C because why would you go to point B? So you have to have them go to point B and then they have to spend some time at point B standing waiting for something else to happen or clapping or stamping or something before they then move on to point C. And uh, everything is so that if, Nothing has to depend on the participation of someone else. So people have to be able to drop out because their child's had a strop, wants a biscuit, needs a toilet, wants to take their clothes off. And uh, the dance can still continue. You can't have something depending on somebody else. And if they go, it's fallen to bits. For example, I've come up with a thing called Jenny's Roundabout Dance, which I think pretty much fulfills the criteria of things you would do at a Scottish dance. You hold your partner's hand, twos or threes, skip around the circle for 16 counts, stand still. Children orbit the adults. You've got enough music to go around twice, you've got eight bars. Adults orbit the children. You've got enough music to go around twice, you've got eight bars. Eight claps and eight stamps. And while you're stamping, you can be taking your partner's hand ready to do it again. So claps and stamps are great because it gives you time to catch up. It gives you the parents time to catch the children who have run around the room. Nobody's going anywhere. So it's the sort of grounding eight bars, eight claps, eight stamps. Children can do that even if the parents have got their hands full. And then you're good to go again. But you've given them that pause, that punctuation. So it's not everybody constantly moving all the time. Uh, so what I usually do is I do a, maybe a Gay Gordons, maybe Journey's Roundabout Dance. Then we'll maybe have a Flying Scotsman where they're in a long line. So that's quite exciting. You get chosen to be the train driver, but that takes quite a long time. And so after that, they're a bit tired. So I'll let them have a drink. And then after that, it's about, because children's attention span is like this. Um, they're really keen to dance, but then they get very tired. But if you give them a long break, you'll lose them. So I'm constantly giving them different shapes, different formations, different ideas, different things to look at to keep the attention. Because if you keep giving them the same thing or if something goes on too long, you'll lose them. Um, so whereas adults, you would need a longer break between maybe longer dances to give them chance to recover. For children, you need short dances and then short breaks. But don't let them leave because if they run away into another room, you'll never get them back. So um, then maybe after we've done that, I might get some visuals out and we do a game of musical spots and I put the spots out on the floor and they've, wow, I'm 10 minutes in already. And they, um, when you hear the music, you dance. When the music stops, you jump on a spot. And then we do eight head pats on our spot and then we carry on dancing or eight shoulder pats on our spot. And then we'd carry on dancing or eight claps on our spot. And then we'd all carry on dancing 
So that gives the parents a bit of a break so that they're not constantly running around because the children can do that on their own. And it gives the children something different because there's visuals. And sometimes I can ask them, what do you want to do next? And they might, might suggest bottoms is always hilarious, uh, jumps, hops, whatever. And then I get them to tidy up the spots. And then I say something along the lines of right now, who has time and energy for two more dances? And usually, even if they're flagging, they can think, oh, two dances, that's all right. We can we can probably, and the parents will be like, come on, come on, I need two dances to go. And then usually an hour pretty much does them. They're like preschoolers, people who are very small, don't want any longer than an hour. So if you give them a long break, I'm finding they won't come back. They'll, they'll have lost focus. So you want a short and sharp hour, fill that with things with, with different shapes, and then they can go and do something else. So I always finish with Circassian Circle. Everybody in, everybody out, everybody in, everybody out. Children in and a clap, children out. Grown-ups in and a clap. Grown-ups out and find your partner, but be very careful. There may be a child right behind you. Do not tread on your child, yours or anybody else's health and safety. So often people fall backwards over their children. Skip round, take a walk. So uh, I often use recorded music it's not often that somebody will because these are usually fundraisers people often can't afford um to fork out for a musician although if i do get a musician it's nice mainly because they have to take the kit and i don't but, but if i am using recorded music it's great because um i've got a huge selection of different tracks that i can use and so if they're a fast and furious group i can use music that goes fast and furious but I've also got very slow very steady music and I can look at them and I can think no you're going to need extra time so I'll put on a more steady track and also something I often do like for maybe if they're five six seven year olds dancing together rather than dancing with parents I'll quite often put on like a 40 bar tune but for 32 bar dance so they'll do 32 bars of the dance more or less and then we've got eight bars to regroup make sure you're next to your partner make sure you're all on the correct side of the dance make sure the first couple's got to the bottom now we're good to go again and just having that extra eight bars of breathing space makes a big difference um other things i try and have a soft start to my events so rather than everybody sitting around in silence and then bam suddenly there's music I have music playing quietly as people arrive, crank the volume up a little bit as more people arrive. And then by the time they've got there, by the time I'm ready to start, they've probably lost a bit of the shyness. They've had a hop around to the music. Their parents have probably encouraged them to hop about. They know what's expected. And so it's not such a scary new thing. And I often start them off with a little game of follow the leader and they just copy me to the music. So that gets them into moving to the music without actually having to go anywhere and dance. And then we skip around. Um, I charge per family, not per child, so that um, people aren't penalised for having extra children. And also it's really difficult because if you're charging per child, do you charge for two-year-olds, do you charge for babies? And you actually would, you know, it's, it's a lot easier just to say, for a family and also I they pay on the way out and not on the way in so that if a child hasn't enjoyed it then um, they can leave five minutes in and they've lost nothing um, and so they're, they're not making too much of an, of an investment by buying a ticket which brings me on to the other thing and Kath and um, Bernie are probably sick of hearing me say this but I think it's a huge thing that people don't think about and this isn't just a child thing People will go to a fundraiser or a school Cayley or something and they'll say, well, that went really well. Everybody wants to dance. I'll book you for my wedding or my birthday party. And then they can't understand why they don't get the same result as they got at the fundraiser. And it's because people who are going to a fundraiser or a Cayley for St Andrew's Day or a Cayley for Halloween go because they want to dance. I mean, quite often... They go because they want the child to dress up in a Halloween costume and Achilles happens to be a way to do it. But they, they go because on some level they want to dance, whereas they go to a wedding or a birthday party because they've been invited. 
like this weekend, I did a Kaylee for the Twins Club and it was a, a Christmas party. So it was the Twins Club Christmas party and it had struck the organiser as a fab idea to have me doing Kaylee dancing at it. And with the best will in the world, it wasn't as successful as I think she'd maybe hoped because they were there to have a Christmas party. They weren't necessarily there to dance. So I was vying with Santa and face painting and, and you know, you know, Kaylee dance, get your face painted, go to see Santa. Everybody's going to choose the other two options. And I think the organiser was a bit like, oh, this is really weird because I came to a fringe session and she did really well join the fringe. And like, mm, yes, that's because people came to my sessions to join the fringe because they wanted to dance. We will leave it there. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.